So here we have close to 100,000 rows of weather data recorded in Hungary. And our objective for today is to produce a linear regression model that's able to predict humidity to a reasonable accuracy, given a new set of weather observations from the following variables. So this project will combine all knowledge from previous episodes, taking us from start to finish of building, evaluating and improving our model. So the first step is to import and explore our data into Python. So here I have a Jupyter notebook in which, in which we'll be executing this project. If you guys aren't sure on how to set up your programming environment, I'd highly recommend checking out my previous episode, episode 4.3, of implementing simple linear regression in Python. So to import our data, it's the exact same process as before. We import the pandas library. We then store our data into a variable. So we'll call this weather history. And then we use the read CSV function from pandas. So we do pd.read underscore CSV. And then we insert our file path. So here I've saved the weather data under the file name project data. Here it is, weather history. So we can see all of the previous data that we've been working with as well. So we'll copy the file path. Then we add the file name. So weather history.csv. And I don't want to display all of this data onto the notebook. So to just get the first few rows of our data, we can do weather history dot head. If we run this, we can see all of our weather variables. So let's now explore our data a little bit and we can do weather history dot describe. We run this. So here we have some basic statistics of each of our weather variables. So for example, the number of rows. So here we have close to 100,000, which is great for building good accurate models. We also have the mean values for each of our variables, standard deviation, minimum, all the, all the relevant quartiles and maximum values. So one thing to note is with cloud cover, we have both a minimum and maximum of zero, suggesting that all of the data entries in cloud cover are just simply just zero. And we should not include this in our model for predicting humidity. So the next step is to pre-process our data so it's ready to build and test our model. So for that, I've imported several modules from the scikit-learn library. Pre-processing, which enables us to scale our data. Polynomial features, which will enable us to implement polynomial regression and find nonlinear relationships between our input variables and humidity. And lastly, train test split, which will enable us to split our data into training and test data. So the first thing we should do is to define our model's features, which is our input variables. And for that, we can store them in the variable weather features. So here we're going to include all of our variables apart from humidity, as this is our output or our target value in cloud cover, because we realized before that cloud cover only contains zeros, which would not be useful to include in our model. So just as a side note, by including each of these variables as our features, we're assuming that each of these have an effect on humidity. However, that might not be the case. So a good way to check this is to plot each of our variables against humidity and trying to find some sort of relationship. If you guys want to know how to plot variables against each other, I'd recommend you guys checking out my previous video of implementing multiple linear regression in Python. So one thing to note is because we have so much data, when making these plots, it'll be difficult to find any patterns. So sometimes it's good just to include the variable, even if you don't think it has an effect on humidity, and then seeing at the end how your model performs with or without that particular feature. So next we should define our capital X, which is our input variables. In this case, we've already decided we're going to include all of these features as our input. So we can simply do weather history and then weather features. So here now in our X variable, we have all of the relevant input data of temperature, apparent temperature, and so on. Next we'll set our target value or output, which is Y. So we can do Y equals weather history dot humidity. Because it's just one variable, we can just simply do dot humidity. So the next step when implementing linear regression is to scale our data. So if you look at our data here, each of our variables are in quite different scales. For example, pressure is in the thousands. We have wind bearing, which is in the hundreds and temperature, which is in the tens. So leaving all the data as it is may result in inaccurate models, especially if you're going to be using regularization. So just to be safe and put all our data on the same playing field, we're going to scale it. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be subtracting each data value from its columns mean and dividing it by a standard deviation. So if you guys are familiar with the standard normal distribution, we're essentially squeezing all of our data so that it fits that distribution, putting them all on the same scale. So luckily there is a function that can do that for us. So we're going to define our scaled data as now x underscore scaled. And then we do pre-processing 
x. So next we're going to implement polynomial features to find if there's any nonlinear relationships between our input variables and humidity. To do so, we call the polynomial features function. So we do poly equals polynomial features. And in this case, we're just going to set that to one. So we're leaving the data as it is. So if you guys are interested in this function and how it works, I'd recommend checking out implementing polynomial regression in Python. So next we need to apply this function onto our data. And because this is the final step of implementing our input or x data, we'll call this x underscore final. I'm going to do poly.fit underscore transform. And here we're transforming our scale data. So lastly, we need to split our data into training and test data. So before implementing this train test split function, I just want to quickly explain how this works. So let's imagine here this was all of our data and we want to split it into training and test data. And let's say we wanted to use all of this data here for training. So I'll put that the blue background. And the remaining data here is test data. Put that as green. So we've already split our data into X, which is our input variables, and Y, which is our target value, which was humidity in this case. But there is technically a line here separating X and Y. So notice here now that we have four sections. We have this section here of our X training data. We have this section here of our Y training data and then X test and Y test. So we need to call four different variables to store all of this data into. So we're going to do X underscore train, X underscore test, Y underscore train, and Y underscore test. So we then call our train test split function. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. We then give this function our final X data and Y. We can then decide how much data we're going to be used for testing. So we're going to do test underscore size. So in this case, we're just going to be using 10%. So we'll do test size equals 0 0.10. And this function also gives us the ability to randomly shuffle our data before splitting it into training and test data to prevent any bias problems. So to do so, we set a random state. So we do random underscore state equals 42. So we're essentially just calling the algorithm in which to randomly shuffle our data. So if you run this code now, we've successfully pre-processed and splitted all of our data into training and test data. So now that we've pre-processed all of our data, we're ready to implement our linear regression algorithm to produce our model. So for that, I've imported the linear model function from the scikit-learn library. So we're going to be building our model on all of our training data, which we've defined here. So X train and Y train, and then we'll be using our test data to evaluate our model. We first set a variable name for our model. So we'll call it reg R, short for regression. We set that equal to linear underscore model dot ridge. So this dot ridge enables us to implement ridge regression, which is essentially linear regression with L2 regularization. There are two forms of regularization, L1 and L2. I'm not going to go into too much detail about these methods. But essentially, the job of regularization is to reduce our parameter values to prevent our model from overfitting our data. We can also set our regularization parameter and we'll set it to 0.5. So here it's called alpha. I believe in a previous episode I called it lambda, but to adhere to scikit-learn convention, we call it alpha. We then fit our model to our training data. So we do reg.fit. So we do x train and y train. So now that we've produced our model, we later want to test and evaluate it to make improvements. So for that, we're going to create a variable called y underscore predict, which is going to be all of our predicted values our model makes on our test data. And recall that test data is data our model has not seen before. We can then compare these predicted values with the actual values and obtain an evaluation metric such as mean squared error or r squared, which I'll be going over in a minute. And we can then use these metrics to make improvements to our model. So we'll store these predicted values in the variable y underscore predict. We then call the name of our model dot predict and x underscore test. We can then print some of these predicted values by simply retyping the name. And we run this and here you go. So here are some of our predicted humidity values of our test data. So before we go on to evaluating and improving our model, we're first going to get a quick idea of what our model looks like by displaying our model's intercept and coefficient on our notebook. So to do so, we're going to do print, then we're going to give it a label, so intercept. Then we do comma, regression dot intercept. And then we do the same thing for our coefficients. So we do print, and then another label, coefficients. 
and then comma progression dot co f. And if we run this now, we can see here our intercept and coefficients of our model. So currently our model has seven parameters, which is all of our weather features here, plus our additional intercepts. So later we're going to be adding more features and consequently more parameters to our model and seeing how that has an effect on our model's performance. So now, in order to evaluate our model, I've imported two functions, mean squared error and R2 score. So mean squared error we've discussed before as the average distance our predicted values are away from our actual values, all squared. And the R2 score is known as R squared or coefficient of determination. Basically shows us the extent in which our output, which is humidity, can be predicted by our inputs, which is all of our weather features here. So this R2 score takes a value between zero and one. Zero indicates that our model is unable to capture any relationship between our input and output and shows poor model performance. And a score of one shows that our model is able to capture a lot of relationships, if not all relationship between our inputs and output and shows a good model performance. Often we look for an R2 score greater than 0 0.7 for a model to be called good. So to implement these evaluation metrics on our model, we can simply first give them a label and we're going to round this evaluation metric to three decimal places. And we can do that with percentage sign dot three F and then outside the quotes, another percentage sign. And here we call our function mean squared error. And it simply just takes two values, which is our actual values, which in this case is y underscore test and our predicted values, which is i underscore predict. And we can do the exact same thing for our coefficient of determination. And again, it takes our actual y values and predicted y values. So if we run this now, we can see our mean squared error for our model is 0 0.02, which is okay, seems relatively low. And our coefficient of determination is 0 0.479. So this shows relatively poor model performance. So recall that I said a coefficient of determination above 0 0.7 is considered good. So 0 0.479 is quite low. And by this, we're essentially just checking for a linear relationship between our weather features here and humidity, but that might not necessarily be the case. So how do we check for quadratic relationships? We can simply change this one to a two and then run this again, and also rebuild our model. And lastly, our evaluation cell. So here we can see now that we have many more coefficients and an intercept, and our coefficient of determination has increased significantly to 0 0.613, which is quite reasonable. And we're still maintaining a low mean squared error. So we could use this model to make reasonable predictions for humidity given new weather observations, but let's see if we can improve it a bit more. So let's now check if there are any cubic relationships. So again, we'll run all of our cells. And lastly here again. And yes, our mean squared error has decreased and our coefficient of termination is now getting closer to one, which is great. But we also now have a significant amount of model parameters, which is gonna be taking more and more computing power and it may take longer to build our model. I'm just gonna change this regression.coefficient to learner regression coefficient. So instead of displaying each of our individual parameter values, it's just gonna give us the amount of parameters in our model, which we can expect to increase as we increase the number of polynomial features. So here I've produced a small table recording the number of polynomial features and the corresponding R2 score. So we found out that when we included seven polynomial features, we produced the highest coefficient of determination of 0.676. So when we included more polynomial features, our R2 score began to decrease, suggesting now that our model is beginning to overfit our data. So one way to prevent overfitting is by increasing our regularization parameter alpha from 0 0.5 to let's say five or 10. But in this case, I'm not going to do that because we already have quite a computationally expensive model that has 1,717 parameters, which is our coefficients plus our intercept. And we don't want to make our model too big as this will take a lot of computational resources and it'll take some time to reproduce the model or use it on different data sets. So now that we've established our model with seven polynomial features yields the best results, we will now actually make use of our model and use it to make some predictions for a new set of weather observations. So here our model takes six inputs, which we've defined in our weather features. So I'm going to place each of these inputs in a variable called weather obs, short for weather observation. We're going to do double square brackets to change our input into a 2D array so it's suitable for input in our model. We can really just make up any result here. So let's say we had an observation of 32 degrees, an apparent temperature of 31.4 degrees, a wind speed of 44 kilometers per hour, a wind bearing of 344 degrees, visibility of 13 kilometers, and a pressure of 1020.33 millibars. 
So let's say, for example, we went to Hungary one day and this was our observed weather data. And we need to just make sure that our input order corresponds with the order in which we put our features. So this 32 corresponds with temperature, 31.4 with the parent temperature and so on. So next we need to apply the exact same pre-processing steps to our data as we did before. So we just simply need to scale our data and apply polynomial features and then we're ready to input it in our model to find a new variable called weather observation underscore scaled where we scale our data and then we implement our polynomial features and we record that in weather observation underscore final. And lastly we use our model which we produced in this project to make a prediction for humidity given our weather observations here. So we'll just simply do y underscore predict equals regression dot predict and then make sure it's our final process data and then we'll just print this predicted value on our notebook and if you run this cell here we get our predicted humidity value of 0 0.789 so i hope you guys enjoyed this project and learned something new out of it this project concludes all of our work with linear regression so in the next series of episodes, we're going to be taking a look at logistic regression, but we're now going to be moving on to classification algorithms, where instead of coming up with value outputs, we're going to be taking a look at how we can code an algorithm that take a set of inputs and to be able to classify these inputs into a particular group.